Welcome to Letters to Rising Leaders. It's a podcast series about God, soul, love, and leadership. And I'm your host, Tom Moore. If you're following along in my book, Letters to Rising Leaders, this is week 20, and the topic is disillusionment. Last week, we talked about doubt. This week, we're talking about disillusionment. Next week is depression, and the week after, the topic is despair. Why? Why are we taking up these morose topics? Well, I think it's because in our lives, we go through these periods of time that are the dark nights of our souls. That is part of the human condition. And if we are going to form a deep and mature and rich piety, a rich relationship with God, we have to confront these difficult times in our lives and come to terms with where God fits in all that. Now, disillusionment is the dissolution of a belief that we once thought to be true. In disillusionment, that veil of false belief is ripped from our face. It shocks us into a new awareness of what is real, which is both troublesome and disorienting. And when we're in that state, we grieve for what was, and and we resist, but can't deny what is. And it's hard sometimes to find God in all that. I want to share today the story of Corrie Ten Boom. Corrie was the daughter of a watchmaker who lived in Amsterdam during World War II. In May of 1940, the Nazis invaded the Netherlands. And soon, the occupying force mobilized to implement in the Netherlands, as it had done in other conquered areas, the final solution. In other words, the extermination of the Jews. Realizing what was happening, Corey's father gathered his family together and asked their support to begin welcoming Jews into their home, to hide them, to protect them, and then to secret them away so that they could flee to safety. And they built a secret hiding place that was behind a false wall, which was placed right inside Corey's own bedroom. And for two years, Corey and her sister Betsy and the Ten Boom family hid many Jews, saved many lives, until, betrayed by a neighbor, the Ten Booms were caught. The whole family was thrown into prison. Eventually, Corey and her sister Betsy ended up in a concentration camp by the name of Ravensbrück. And you can only imagine her disillusionment the falling apart of her entire world with the invasion of the Nazis, the betrayal by neighbors stripped of her family, now in the clutches of evil inside a concentration camp. Now, when they got there, they were stripped of their clothes in front of the guards, given ragged prison outfits, and placed into barracks that slept with sleeping platforms three high, absolutely chalked to the gills with prisoners, crawling with fleas. And that was obviously a time of great darkness and disillusionment. But Betsy and Corey had smuggled a Bible into the concentration camp, and they began a clandestine Bible study group. They began to try to give hope to other prisoners Now, Betsy died in Ravensbrook, but Corey survived. And after the war, she began to tell her story and began to travel the world and actually became somewhat famous, telling her Christian story, her Christian faith journey to audiences all around the world. Now, in 1947, at the end of such a talk in Munich, 
Corey saw a man approaching her, and she froze because she instantly recognized it was one of the guards from Ravensbrook. And she remembered he was one of the ones that was there when she had to strip down. And he said to her as he came to the front of the line, I too was at Ravensbrook. Since then I've become a Christian. You say that God forgives all sins. I know I've been forgiven for all the cruel things I did, but I hope to hear it from your lips. Will you forgive me? Now here's what she said happened next, and I'm quoting. It could not have been many seconds that he stood there, hand held out, but to me it seemed hours as I wrestled with the most difficult thing I had ever had to do. For I had to do it. I knew that. The message that God forgives has a prior condition, that we forgive those who have injured us. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, Jesus says, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And still I stood there with the coldness clutching my heart. But forgiveness is not an emotion. I knew that too. Forgiveness is an act of the will, and the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Jesus, help me, I prayed silently. I can lift my hand. I can do that much. You supply the feeling. And so, woodenly, mechanically, I thrust my hand into the one stretched out to me. And as I did, an incredible thing took place. The current started in my shoulder, raced down my arm, spread into our joined hands, and then this healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being, bringing tears to my eyes. I forgive you, brother, I cried, with all my heart. Corrie Ten Boom found God in the midst of her disillusionment. How about you? Have you encountered moments of disillusionment? Maybe you're in such a, a moment now. I hope you can find inspiration from Corey Ten Boom's story and can find God in the midst of darkness. The song for this week is Into This Broken Place. And it's about the idea that even in dark times, God is there. We can call out to him. We can ask for his holy healing power. Robert Berry joins me on instrumentals and J.J. Johnson joins me in a duet. I hope you enjoy it. There's a sinkhole and it's swallowing my life. There's a sinkhole and it's swallowing my life. Everywhere I look, I just see anguish and strife. There's a battering ram Knocking down my faith There's a battering ram Knocking down my faith And I'm losing sight of your love, truth, and grace Disillusionment Permeates my soul Disillusionment Permeates my soul I'm slipping, slipping, slipping out of control Oh, so come to me Inside this hollow arm This hollow hour and touch me with your holy healing
uprising, Lord. Upon your rock I will stand. Upon your rock I will stand. Uprising, Lord. Upon your rock I will stand. Upon your rock I will stand. Renewed by the love and the strength of the great I am. Great I am. So send me, Lord, into this broken place. So send me, Lord, into this broken place. That I may be your hands, your feet, your face. That I may be your hands, your feet, your grace. No matter the circumstances of our lives, Let's be God's hands and feet and grace today. Well, that's it for today. I hope you'll join us next week for the next episode in this Letters to Rising Leaders podcast series. As I say each week, leader of goodness, go in faith to love and heal the world.